2022, finally the year is on us. Yes, there is a major COVID wave going on in every part of the world. And the first thing I will tell you is a happy new year, but please maintain all COVID protocols to remain healthy and safe. This show, looking ahead at the sporting year 2022, I am deeply appreciative of the support that Rev Sports has received from the MPL Sports Foundation. So this is in association with them. Looking ahead at 2022, it's a massive sports year. The way I want to divide this is I want to divide cricket and Olympic sport. And I want to start with Olympic sport. Two massive, massive competitions. In India, we love to consume multidiscipline games. Love it. World Championships, Grand Prix, Super Series in Badminton, they are all fine. But the moment there is a multidiscipline games, we just love it. The index of performance becomes how a country does in a multidiscipline game. Two such this year. The first in Birmingham between 28th of July and the 8th of August, the Commonwealth Games. And the second, just about a month later, in September, the Asian Games. Let's start with the Commonwealth Games. India has now become a massive, massive powerhouse as far as the Commonwealth is concerned. And yet another time, India will want to finish right at the top in the top 3-4 as far as the Commonwealth Games is concerned. It will be a breeding ground for young Indian talent because we know that the standard of competition in the Asian Games will be higher as a result of which it might well be an idea to send relatively younger athletes to the Commonwealth Games. Some of the athletes I will look forward to and I have to talk to you about them. One, Shaili Singh. I will be very very keen to see how Shaili Singh performs. Trained by Anju Bobby George and Robert Bobby George, I have tremendous hopes of Shaili Singh going forward. There are some tremendous athletes as far as India is concerned. Now if you see the horizon, obviously one would want to see our golden man, Neeraj Chopra. He had put on 12 or 13 kilos, as he said to Indian journalists, after the Tokyo Olympics. He said, I have eaten अरे भाई कलकत्ता में हमने तो खिलाया था आपको हम सब जानते हैं आपने खाया नीरज बट आपका बेस्ट क्या है आप में डिसिप्लिन है यू हैव ऑलरेडी लॉस्ट 6 टू 7 किलोस दैट इज योर ऑफ सीजन वेट एग्जैक्टली व्हाट आई वांट टू सी इन आवर गोल्ड मेडल विनर व्हाट डू आई एक्सपेक्ट आउट ऑफ नीरज चोपड़ा इन 2022 आई एक्सपेक्ट नीरज चोपड़ा टू ब्रेक दैट 90 मीटर बैरियर ब्रेक हिज ओन नेशनल रिकॉर्ड ऑफ 88.07 and then go on and touch that 90 meter barrier. That is where the Diamond League, the World Championships will also come into play. Neeraj Chopra, massive year for you. The CWG and of course, the Asian Games thereafter. Coming to shooting, the team disappointed in uh, Tokyo, but they will have another opportunity as far as they are concerned. The MPL Sports Foundation supports the National Rifle Association of India. And may I also say, that you know this will be a big year as far as esports is concerned because with esport virtual gaming responsible gaming game of skill it will encourage people to also take to physical sport take the sport of shooting for example the moment you use technology and you get used to it you would also be encouraged to take the physical sport up that is why it is a very important year as far as esports is concerned and the synergy between esport and physical sport. So, coming to the, the shooting fraternity, I expect big things from Indian shooting. I have never had any doubt that India has tremendous, tremendous talent. Manu Bhakar, Saurabh Chaudhary, both tipped to win medals in Tokyo did not, but if anybody doubts their talent, it will be wrong. Abhinav Bindra keeps saying, the first Olympic Games is always your hardest. Now they are experienced. Now they know what the big stage is all about. And I would want to see all of these people, Rahi, Manu, Saurabh, Abhishek, Divyansh, each of them excel and do extremely well in 2022. Come to hockey. 
Hockey India has decided, and rightly so, not to send the teams to the Commonwealth Games, but they will send the teams to the Asian Games. Why? The point is very simple. You win the Asian Games and you get a direct qualification for Paris. It is impossible for a sporting team to peak within a month in two different games. Not possible at the highest elite level. As a result of which, Hockey India has undertaken this move. I want to see our girls, Rani Rampal, Savita Punia and the girls, Vandana Kataria, they did fantastic in Tokyo to take this a step forward and now start to win medals. I want to see Manpreet, Shrijesh and the men's team. They finished third in the Asian Champions Trophy to go a step further, win the Asian Games gold and qualify direct for Paris. So a massive year as far as I am concerned for Indian hockey. Commonwealth Games this time in Birmingham and by the way I will be there, Rev Sports will be there. Another major attraction has to be the women's cricket induction. For the first time in the Commonwealth Games, we will have cricket and who, who better than to start off India v Pakistan. Whenever India takes on Pakistan, the game is elevated to a very different level. So obviously we will consume that India-Pakistan encounter. Coming to badminton, our players finished off really well with uh, Kidambi Srikanth winning the silver in the World Championship and the year ender and Laksha Sen finishing off with the bronze. So all of a sudden, we are seeing a real ray of hope as far as men's badminton. I will give numbers to Sai Pranit. I will give numbers to Laksha. I have great hopes from Kidambi Srikanth who is finally fit again. Do not forget HS Pronoy. He has that incredible giant killer killing streak in him. Coming to the women, PV Sindhu yet again had a decent year, except that Tai Zuing hurdle. PV Sindhu can take on anyone, and I would expect Sindhu to this year overcome the Thai problem as well because she clearly remains our best bet. And coming to cricket, two massive tournaments this year, not to forget the Indian Premier League with the introduction of two new teams, Lucknow and of course Ahmedabad. The men's T20 World Cup in Australia, Rohit Sharma and Rahul Dravid will want to redeem the Indian performance in the last eight years at ICC tournaments and give us our first silverware. No debate, we have the potential to be able to do so. But more recently, in exactly two months from now, in March, the women led by Mithali Raj, of course Jhulan Goswami, Smriti and Harman will be in New Zealand for the Women's World Cup. India does have the 50 over team to lay a significant, you know, we have a great chance, a significant chance of winning this piece of silverware. We were very close in England. If you remember Lords in 2017, Jhulan, 10 overs, 22-3, we can. And if that happens, it will be a fantastic fairy tale for Mithali Raj and Jhulan Goswami. So overall, 2022, a massive year physically and also for virtual sport, e-sport, where we have to be responsible in terms of gaming because it's a game of skill and it will get more and more people to come to physical sport also. So as I said, during COVID times, get into sport physically and virtually at home or wherever you are and make the most of your opportunity. Be physically active, be sporty, whether it's in the virtual plane or in the physical plane, because ultimately that will help you improve. I hope you liked it. The overview and looking ahead at 2022, a massive sporting year, fingers crossed, we will have great success as far as Indian sport is concerned.